Right, we've got one from Kirsty Britz, and she's asking, what is the role of big companies in bringing the youth skills gap from education to work? Okay, what's the role? First of all, companies are in business to make money. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, if you think they're in business to do something else, I'm sorry. You're wrong. Uh, there are nonprofits and things like that who do things for reasons other than making money. But the other side of it is, if a company doesn't make money, that means they're losing money, and sooner or later they go out of business. And when companies go out of business, then all of a sudden there's people who no longer are paid, and people go on unemployment, and that's not good either. So the very first thing a company does is stay in business, and that means make money. Um, Likewise, these companies pay taxes, and one of the reasons why there are some universities that are free of costs or low cost is because the government is subsidizing them. Why is the government subsidizing them? Because these companies say that without trained people, we can't run our companies. And sooner or later, we're all going to go back to programming, to, to, to plowing with sticks because it takes technology to make steel and steel to make plows. And without the technology, we don't make the plows. So now that we've set it straight as to where things are going, then what is the responsibility of companies to the training of people? And my feeling is that companies can do several things. Number one, companies should be working with universities to tell universities what they need in the way of training. So every university should have an advisory committee made up of companies, and then they feed input into the university. These companies should not think, however, that what they say is automatically generated into courses. This is up to the professors and the, the, the university itself to take their experience to filter all of this and come up with the proper steps and methods of taking the students and training them into what industry needs. Now there are some other things that industry can do. And I'm a great believer in cooperative education where the, the university will take the students and maybe during their summertime or maybe a certain portion of the year send them off to companies where the students will then work at that company doing the type of job they should be doing. They get paid a small amount of money, but they're learning what's going on. And this is actually what changed me from being an electrical engineer into computer science. Because I started off studying electrical engineering in 1969. And I went to a correspondence course, I went to a, a co-op period, I took a correspondence course in programming, I learned about programming, I said, this is really nice. At the same time, I was almost electrocuted by 13,600 volts and 800 amps, and I said, I think the programming is a lot safer. <laughs> so I changed my curriculum because of this, I changed my future because of this. And I think this is a very good thing. When I got out of university, I had a year and a half of practical experience in a company. I knew what the way the company works, you know. And if I had graduated without that experience, number one, I would have been in a field that I don't know I would have enjoyed as much. And number two, I would have had to take that time to learn how a company works. So cooperative education is a great way. Now, here in England, you've had a guild system for many, many years. And a guild system starts off with an apprentice, and you have a journeyman, and then you have a master. Typically, these are used for things like the trades, plumbing, clock making, things like that. But recently, there's been this movement to have systems administrators trained through this apprenticeship program. And they go to work for a company to learn systems administration, and they go and they're trained for a certain period of time, and over time, they move up the pay scale at the same time that they're getting their learning. At the end of this, they take a test, a certification, to show that they've learned their training. So I think that this is a great way to train systems administrators in the, in the type of systems administration that companies need if they can't afford to go to university. And there's a lot of people that can't. Even if the university is free, they need to work to earn money to live, they may have to support their family, 
and an apprenticeship program gives you the best of both worlds. So to provide more apprenticeship capabilities and, and opportunities is another way that industry can help this. And finally, to understand that students want to understand how things work. They are curious, they want to be able to stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I push open source software. So that students can look at the way the programs are written by people who are extremely good programmers and learn how to write good code. And if you are an industry that needs to have a programmer, why not hire somebody that does open source or free software programming? Because you're getting a good programmer and they can write code for you. You don't have to redistribute your code as open source if you're just hiring them as a programmer. But you're giving a job to somebody who can do both proprietary code and open code. If you hire somebody who's only written proprietary code, they don't know how the community works. They don't know how to leverage off of open code. And you know, you're only getting, in my, in my viewpoint, half a programmer. So I recommend to people who are hiring programmers to hire people who have worked on open source projects and, and, and know how this mechanism works.